Good morning and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. It is good to be with you all today. Thank you for my week of vacation. I am grateful to everyone who made it possible for me to be away with my husband, for Susan Harris preaching, for Carol taking care of Alter Guild, and Ludi taking care of sound system, and Max taking care of technology, and Debbie holding down the fort in the office, and everybody else who was involved with that. Thank you. I am so very grateful. We think that was the first vacation we had taken without our children, ever. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, they are 21 and 26, so it was overdue. <laughs> but thank you very much. It is good to be with you. If you're online with us, I hope that you will say that you're here. Let us know where you are and participate in the liturgy. Share your prayer concerns that they may be shared in community. We are glad you are worshiping with us. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the music of the prelude. and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. 
We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. A reading from Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as you're able for the gospel. 
The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. If you like sea stories, there is some wonderful literature, folklore, and myths. There's Samuel Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner and Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea. And Homer introduced us to Scylla and Charybdis and the sirens that plagued Odysseus. And in the Old Testament, we meet Leviathan. A popular tale is that medieval map makers would print, here be dragons, to signify unknown regions on a map. While that is more fantasy than fact, map makers did include illustrations of monsters and fearsome creatures in the unexplored places. For them, the oceans and the seas were places of adventure and mystery. And in the biblical narrative, the sea symbolizes chaos and disorder. In today's gospel, Jesus finishes preaching to the crowds from the boat on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, and he tells his disciples, let us go across to the other side. It wasn't a small ask. Some of the disciples were experienced fishermen, and they would have been familiar with the frequent storms that developed on the sea. Others may have been more like fish out of water being asked to set sail when they hadn't spent a whole lot of time on the water at all. Whether they had their sea legs or not, Jesus was asking the disciples to go to the territory of the Gentiles, people who were unknown and strange to them. And as they crossed to the other side, sure enough, a storm rose up. And the word here is the same as the whirlwind in the reading from Job. There was power and strength in these winds. Mark says the waves beat into the boat. It would have been simple enough to turn and retreat to the shore, to seek shelter and refuge, to go back to calm and quiet safety. But the disciples don't do that. Mark says instead, they wake Jesus, who's asleep in the stern or the back of the boat. So do you think Jesus was being irresponsible or callous by taking a nap while the storm tossed them about? We hear the disciples cry out, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? But remember, at least some of the disciples were fishermen. Jesus knew this was their boat, and he trusted their gifts as the crew for navigating the sea. When they do come to him, he responds immediately, rebuking the wind and telling the sea to be still. And Mark says, then there was a dead calm. 
In that moment, the people on the boat with Jesus and in the boats around him witnessed the power and strength, not of nature, but of Jesus, Lord of all. Jesus accompanies us in our own lives and never promises that we won't be asked to go into unfamiliar situations. Following Jesus isn't about going to places we already know or being with people who make us comfortable. And Jesus never says we won't experience storms or get beaten down by circumstances and even be afraid. There is evil in this world. And even when we are safe from explicit evil or overt violence, we still live in a world filled with people. And every one of us is both saint and sinner. And apart from Christ, we cannot be redeemed. Christ alone delivers us from sin and saves us. In the text, the disciples encountered a weather event, a physical storm of wind and waves, but often we find ourselves in the midst of storms, emotionally or spiritually, steered in one direction and then another by forces outside of our control. Slammed this way and that by emotions and fearful of what is ahead. And when we are overwhelmed, the temptation is to think that God has forgotten about us or abandoned us and isn't paying attention and doesn't love us. Mark reminds us that Jesus not only accompanies us in the chaos and disorder, Jesus also equips us, nurturing our gifts for specific vocations and callings. We are created for community and relationship, and Jesus places us in people's lives so that they can see God's love and power through us. And when we do get overwhelmed or fears paralyze us, Jesus responds to our cries and invites us into his peace. Unlike the desert fathers and mothers in the early church or even monastic orders today, most of us find ourselves every day in the midst of chaos and turmoil of the world. And that is where Jesus anchors us in his peace, despite the storms of life, and invites our trust. Hearing Mark's gospel, I think God has equipped us as the church for all that is ahead and expects us to use our gifts and talents for ministry in our community and in the world. We do not need to be afraid, and we must trust that Jesus is with us as we share the good news of God's love for the world. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for your deliverance from sin and evil and for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your steadfast love and presence with us, even in the tumult and turmoil of the wildest storms life brings. Anchor us in your peace, that we would be your witnesses in the world. We pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
invite you to stand as we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be known to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. You laid the foundations of the earth and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, you are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Lord, in your mercy. We pray now especially for those we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Martha Bean. Dan Birch, Adam Bridges and Brittany Smith, Cody Bryant, Kathy Callahan, Mike Callahan, Chris Carmen, Edna Cooper, Phil Costello, the Davenport family, Charles and Mary Degree, Sahar Degree, Tim Farmer, yeah. Avon Fields, yeah. Ann Fitzsimmons, yeah. Carol Ann Fortas, yeah. Mike Green, yeah. Carl Greenwald, yeah. Joe Hutchinson, yeah. Debbie Urban, yeah. Patty Jenkins, yeah. Kay Johnson, yeah. Steve Jolly, yeah. Mark Kaling, yeah. Mark Kent, Rachel Kidwell, Rachel. Muriel Lambert, Rachel. Brian Legrand, Brian. Jim Lilly, yeah. Sonia and Gerald Loveless, Sonia and Gerald. Brenda Lowry, yeah. Pam Lucas, Pam. Eva McCombs, Eva. Janice McGovern, Janice. Sherry Dawn Mack, Dawn. Mary Beth Mees, Mary Bell Moore, Jane Morrow, Jane. Pat Mullen, yeah. Wanda Mullinex, yeah. Teresa Olson, yeah. Bob Patzer, yeah. Linda Patzer, yeah. Lynn Perry, yeah. Gerard Peruzzi, yeah. Margaret Peruzzi, yeah. Liz and Ron Del Pagetto, yeah. John Reed, yeah. Beth Grime, Shannon Sellers, Shannon. Jean and Jim Tesner, Jean and Jim. Jerry Tesner, Jerry. George Ann Thomas, David Waldrop, David. Edith Walker, Edith. Molly and Daryl Waterstrat, Alfie Welch, Alfie. Christopher Williver, 
Mary Ann Woolley. Yeah. Dean Davis. Yeah. Lynn Washburn. Yeah. Scott Paul. Yeah. Bob Bryant. Yeah. William Coyne. Yeah. Jim Wilson. Yeah. Bobby Johnson. Yeah. Gerald Washburn. Yeah. Ray Valentine. Yeah. Lucinda Wallen. Yeah. Lisa Upton. Yeah. Sandy Harmon. Yeah. Ann Sight. Emma Ock, yeah. Brooke Buchanan, yeah. Samantha Hoffman, yeah. Jacob Stone, yeah. Catherine Lilly. Yeah. You dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness that through their leadership you may be exalted in this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Your love endures in all situations. On this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost children. Bless and strengthen them. Lord, in your mercy, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Please be seated. We are not passing the peace in any physical way. If you are online, I invite you to share the peace in the chat or comments. The peace of Christ be with you always. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come, I invite you to be seated and receive the elements that you picked up before worship, knowing that these are the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, given and shed for you. Thank you. 